chapter. Mark 4, pardon me, I didn't give you the chapter. Mark 4 and 26. Mark 4 and 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. Now we know we're back to growing. Because seed that doesn't grow in the ground rots and dies, does it not? So if the seed, and we know by other scriptures that the seed is the word of God. The seed that's planted in the rows of your thoughts, in your earth, your temple, your body, is the word of God. Now it's either going to grow, and if it doesn't grow, it's going to rot and perish. But here, he said the kingdom of God is like seed that a man cast into the ground. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. He's describing a farmer, a seed sower, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. The farmer that plants the seed cannot give you a real reason what propels that seed out of the ground. He gives you some thoughts. But no man but God understands growth, spiritually or naturally. And he said in verse, uh, verse uh, 28, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn of the ear. Did you know the first and highest thing that you have working in your life is a 30-fold? And if God doesn't move you from the 30-fold, the blade, you'll never go to the ear, the 60-fold. Because the, uh, the blade is where a babe is when they come to Christ. That's, that's, that's the babe, the blade. First, the blade. And Christian growth in the Word of God, when you come to Christ, when you come to the Word of God, when you start sitting under the Word of God in teaching regularly, and the Holy Spirit begins to speak to your heart and reveal to you, uh, you're dealing with a blade. You're a babe in Christ. He knows it, and you know it. And the church should recognize it. If you stayed in that condition, the 30-fold would be the best you could hope for. What is the 30-fold? That is the resurrection from the dead at the close of 1,000 years from now. Revelations 20 and 6. And the rest of the dead live not again until the 1,000 years are finished. That's the blade. That's what comes forth in the resurrection of, of the, of, of, at the end of the close of 1,000 years. Then the ear, if you reach the ear then, that means yeah, there's growth to produce a fruit. The ear, the ear of corn. If that is in your life or mine, and the word of God and grace and mercy lets me become an ear, I'm not revealed yet because the husk is all around me. I still have the earthly body. I'm mortal. Mortality hasn't been swallowed up with immortality. But I am in the bride company. I'm in the wise virgins. Matthew 25, there are two classes of virgins. One, the wise virgins. The other, the foolish. Just two classes. Wise and foolish. Now, who was that third party? Behold, uh, the bridegroom cometh. Well, who was the bridegroom coming for? The bride. So there's the bride. Then there's the 60-fold, the bride company, that accompanied the bride, but not the bride. They're not the bride. They don't, they don't have the, they're not the bride of Christ. They're with the bride. That's overcomers in the church, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Word of God, that have overcome flesh, overcome immaturity, sin. They go with the bridegroom to get the bride.
and they're, they're together. That's the ear. Uh, and, and, and see, but then comes the full corn in the ear. That's the final maturing of the overcomers, and you have your 30 and 60 and 100. Did you know all of that's in the church right now? Did you know sitting right here tonight, there's 30 fold, there's 60 fold, there's 100 fold. At the resurrection, the ones that are in the 30 fold will come forth from the grave. But the 60 fold and the 100 fold will not have to come forth from the grave because they are with Christ. They have a new house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Now notice what he says in verse 30, and uh, or, or 29 rather, verse 29. But when the fruit, the fruit, the fruit is the glorious church. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 25, 26, there is the glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, or any such thing. That is the fruit. That's the accepted fruit. That's going to be accepted by Christ. And they, they will be the full corn in the ear. Then, verse 29 said, but when the fruit is brought forth. You know why Jesus has not come yet? Because the full corn in the ear is not ready yet. You know why we're still having church? Because the full corn in the ear is not ready yet. We're in the field growing. There's the blade. There's the, uh, the ear. But God is waiting to send his son because no man knoweth the day or the hour and if one of these television preachers gets on there and you happen to turn on your television or you, or you buy a book and he says, August the 19th, Jesus is going to be here. Or in television, everybody get ready. August the 19th, he's going to be here. Uh, or whatever day he sets. One just did that, by the way. And got egg all over his face. Because no man knoweth the day or the hour. No no. Not the angels. No. Not even the sun. Not even the sun. Knoweth the day or the hour of his coming. Only God knows the hour of his coming. Oh, I wish I could wake the church up to this thought. Since you don't know. What are you doing with your life and your time? Yes. Amen. Since God is going to decide when he's coming, sending his son, yes. what if he decides? Where will I be? What will I be doing? Who will I be thinking? Because I don't know the day or the hour. Isn't that right? I don't know the day or the hour. But I can tell you this. It's when the fruit is ready. Because, look at verse 29. But of that day and that hour, uh, uh, that's 32, I'm reading it. Go back. For no man, no, I don't want that. No. I, want, I want Mark. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, go back to, yes, that's it. Thank you, uh, Sister Marilyn. But when the fruit is brought forth, verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately, immediately, what does he do? He puts in the sickle. What is a sickle? The Word of God. He puts in the Word of God in effect. It's a sickle. And he begins to cut down all of the grain of the harvest of the overcomers, the full corn in the ear. They're ready. They're ready. And the harvest has come when the fruit is brought forth. And you can believe this, the devil is a liar. Fruit is going to be brought forth. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, my son. Hallelujah. 
fruit is going to be in the church. Fruit, don't you let the enemy put your eyes on so and so and so and so and so and so. Get your eyes. We used to sing a song in Fort Benning, Georgia. Get your eyes off the ground. Ain't no discharge lying around. One, two, three, four. Get your eyes off the ground. Don't look around. Don't look around. Just remember, put your maturity into practice. Get ready to be the full corn in the ear. Try to be the ear. If you can't be the full corn, be an ear. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't stay a blade. Don't stay a blade. But grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. See, I'm not over in Revelation tonight, but this is just as important as Revelation is. You need this just as much as you need the deep doctrines. Because you need to come from a blade to an ear to full corn in the ear. I need to do that. I got time for this. One more. I got time for one more. Okay. Uh, all the... All the group hasn't come in yet, so, all right. I got time for Second Peter, chapter 1. <clears throat> Still on growth tonight. Still on, on growing. Now, if I've, if I've said something that troubles you as a child of God, as an elder, a saint of God, this is Wednesday night teaching. This is wash night. We're doing our washing tonight. We got out the rope board. You don't even know what it is. Yeah, How many of you know what a rub board is? Yeah. Well, we used to get the old rub board out and wash the clothes. Yeah. Get them out of the steel pot where we boiled them out in the yard yeah. on the farm. Yeah. After they boiled and boiled and boiled with that yeah. lye soap. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, get them up and rub them. Rub, 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 rub. This is wash knife. The word of God. The washing of the water by the word. The washing of the water by the word. Sister uh, Shum. The 14th chapter of uh, Lord, chapter of Mark said the sower soweth the word. Is a sower You'll get a mic to you and would you pronounce that again and say that again? Uh, Mark 4 and 14 said the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. I like that, yes. So the seed is being sown. It's going to bring forth kingdom of God, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn of the ear. And you'll receive your reward. Uh, how do we grow from a blade to an ear to full corn in the ear? Well, that's, uh, that's good. Anybody else with a comment or a question? You know, I honestly have a question. Brother Marlon, uh, I just don't understand what you just said. Or it might be something I said a week ago. And you don't understand. Could be. But you can bring up a question uh, if you want to. All right, let's, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. And um, let's go to um, verse 4. Verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're still sowing. We're still reaping. We're still growing. We're talking about growth, growth, growth. In verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Thank God for the promises given us in the Word of God. That by these you might be partakers. Now, how are you partakers going from a blade to an ear to a full corn uh, uh, in, the, in the ear? How, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you grow from a babe to a mature statue, measure and statue, unity of the spirit, unity of the faith, you know, the full measure, the statue, the knowledge of Christ? We don't do it by working in the flesh because the flesh will never make you perfect. 
Romans 8th chapter said the carnal mind, natural mind, is enmity. It's against. It's enmity against the Spirit of Christ, the Word of God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither need can be. So here in verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. I want to ask you a question before I go any further down. How many know that you've been given exceeding great and precious promises? I said, how many know that you've been given? How many know that you've been given exceeding great and precious promises? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That by these, but what are, what are some of the problems? I'll, I'll get into it. I'll keep you a few minutes here. The young people come back in. We've been talking, young people and leaders, about growing tonight. Proper growth in the church. Proper how you know you're not growing, how you know you're growing, how you understand that you're achieving or you're not achieving. And he said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What is one of the promises he's given you? He's given you salvation, has he not? Yes. Is that a promise of God? Yes. Did God promise God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we sort of believe in him should not perish? Is that a promise that God gave to all of us? Yes. Should not perish but have yes. everlasting life? That's a promise. Now, if, you have t if you've partaken of that promise, you have that promise. It's no longer a promise. You have it. The difference in God promising you something is when he gives you something. And you're no longer promised, but it's given. When you have a gift, Dad promised it, but he's given it. You were saved. If you come to Christ... If you've repented of your sins, if you've had your sins washed in the blood, removed as far as the east is from the west, you are no longer promised it's given. But what about the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Is that a promise? How many have received that promise? I have received it. I received that promise. I received the other promise. He promised he would heal me. Yes. He's fulfilled that promise. Yes. Yes. God. I could go on. Yes. By these exceeding great and precious promises. Sister um, I know this Evelyn. It sounds kind of simple, but I was thinking for, for corn to grow. Doesn't it need a lot of sun and water? Well, we got the water, we got the rain of the Holy Spirit, and we have the S-O-N. And that's how we grow, isn't it? Like? Yes. But then, there's some, did you ever see in the garden an ear of corn, and it looks so great, and you take off the husk, and it's, it's all dried up? That's Satan in there got in there. That's a backslider. Well, it's something bad, all right, and that's that's what's ruined. That's the ruination of the crop. It looks good from the outside. If God opens your husk up, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. If God opens your husk up, or your body, or your temple at the end of your life and finds worms in the corn, finds it withered, I guarantee you he's not going to say that's full corn in the ear. It's not corn for the garner. Because something happened. And I just want to say this to the young people in here now, and, and uh, I'm going to go back over some of these lessons when everybody's here. I've been talking on growth tonight, on manners, 
on rudeness, on crudeness, on people being, their spirits ruining a service, ruining the worship, and how that we're to get away from that. Because if the church always has to get down on the level of confusion, envy, strife, it is not growing. There's no growth in it, and there's no growth in you as an individual if you are a uh, perpetrator of that. If you are a person that cannot, cannot grow in grace and knowledge and let the grace of God mature you, make you wise, make you planted, make you holy, separate you from sin, then it's of no effect. It's of no effect. And you're to grow. You're not to remain a babe. You're not to remain an ear. You're not to remain a blade. There's to be a group of people that absolutely have come from darkness to light. Amen. From immaturity to maturity. Yes. From lack of wisdom to wisdom. From the wrong spirit to the right spirit. From weakness to strength. Because we've got a job to do. We've got to be ready at the coming of the Lord. Therefore, we can't let any devil or any spirit just keep on muddying the stream, muddying, muddying up, because there's wisdom in the church, there's leadership in the church, there's authority in the church, there's wisdom in the church, and we've been made partakers of his divine nature because of these promises. I'm, I'm not going to finish this tonight, but keep you too long, because the young people come in, I always said we would try to let everybody go before we uh, would, would put uh, too much in one night. But I want you to look at verse 4 quickly. I'll read verse 4 and 5. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And here's how you partake of the divine nature. And beside this, giving all attention, add to your faith, virtue, your knowledge, your faith, virtue, or goodness, righteousness. And to virtue, add knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and to knowledge, temperance, balance, control of yourself. You've been in the work of God a few years and you still get out of control. You lose your spirit while we're trying to worship. You lose your spirit while we're trying to praise God. Give him the glory. Holy Spirit is trying to have his way. You lose your spirit. You're not temperate. You're overbalanced. Uh, temperance is when you're in control of yourself. Control of your family. Control of, of uh, the wisdom, the knowledge that's in you. Temperance is not being to the right or to the left. Choosing up sides. Going on this side or on that side. Going on this side or that side. Families many times have a problem with that. There are family in the natural, so the family in the natural tries to carry that same spirit over into the family and the spiritual. No, no. I'm a Marlowe in the natural. And I'm in Christ in the church. I'm to have another spirit, another attitude. I'm to lose the name Marlowe, the nature Marlowe. I'm striving to be Jesus, like him. I want him to be in me, through me. So if something will happen to another member of the family, I'm to be temperate, and I'm to say that in the natural. That's not in the spiritual. Let me let my spiritual discernment, my spiritual understanding, my spiritual wisdom work, because I am in Christ, and Christ is in me. Amen. See, that's temperance. Amen. That's balance. And we're to add to balance, or to temperance, patience, the power to endure. And the patience, godliness, becoming like God in his ways, actions, words, spirit. And the godliness, 
brotherly kindness. I'm to be kind to my brother because I have godliness. And then finally, and a brotherly kindness, charity. The bond of perfection, the seal going from the ear to the full corn in the ear. Perfection, overcoming. Now that's how we go from the blade to the full corn in the ear. We just don't jump there. We just don't go there. We go there by this procedure that God has for us and these steps one after another. And finally one day, the aggravation is gone of life the frustration is gone. The temptation is gone because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't know the people I've had tell me, Brother Marlowe, that won't happen. I'm a human being. Oh, yes, it will. Because one day you're not going to be a human being. So if you want to change into that other house, Mortality be swallowed up with immortality, then throw from the earth to heaven and grow in grace and knowledge. Well, we've had a different lesson tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Hope that it was profitable to you. Hope you gained something from it. And uh, I'm sure that some have, and I hope all have. And remember, I want to encourage her, uh, you to do this. On Wednesday nights, um, because someone said, Brother Marty, are you always going to follow this format? No, no, I'm not. I'm going to watch the Spirit. And I'm going to watch the Spirit. And when the Spirit tells me to change, move into another uh, format, another gear, well, we'll do that. Because we're a growing church. We're an abounding church. But I thank God for the interest that we have on Wednesday night. I thank God for the interest. I thank God for you people of God. I sit here and let me teach. Now, two things I want to add. You can ask questions anytime you want to. You can ask me questions. Just don't say, well, I don't know whether he would accept that question or not. I'm not sure it will be received. It will be received. Doesn't matter what it is, and uh, we'll receive it. And it isn't too little, too too small. And then the second thing is, if you're studying your Bible through the course of the week, and you run across a certain part of the Bible, and you say, "I'd like to get uh, this answered," bring that question to church. Turn that question in, and we'll deal with that question because that may be where God wants us to go this particular night. So study your scriptures. You see something there you don't understand? Bring that. We used to do that when I first came to the church many years ago. And it was always so interesting and so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. That, is that it? Everybody, so, everybody satisfied? Say that's good for the night? Sister Carol, you look like you had a question. I did kind of have a question. Sure, I call that. Uh, all right, would you get a mic over there? We'd like for others to hear it. <laughs> it's getting late, and I don't know that I can even go there. However, over in the Song of Solomon, there's a beautiful picture of the garden of the bride when it's completely full grown. And I think that's, in, I had to open it close, and I think that's in 4 and 15 or something. Mm -hmm. But it describes the entire garden and the, the spices that are that are there. I think it's uh, two songs of Solomon four. It's four and fifteen, isn't it? fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. It starts at 12, so yes. All right, 12. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed, 
Is that what you're referring to? Yes. That is the picture of the bride. If you keep going, That's the full corn in the ear. If you keep going down to 16 and get to the point where it says, Awake, North Land, come thou south. And at that point, the spices in the garden, the scent of them goes forth, and everybody, everybody recognizes. All right, let's go, let's read down to the end of the chapter, stop with three or four verses. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. That's the bride of Christ. They're shut up until the beginning of the thousand years. They're shut up until the spring comes forth, and she rules with Christ. Thy plants are an orchid, a pomegranate. Pleasant fruits. I think an overcomer would be pleasant. Yes. Yes. Camphire yes. and spikenard. Spikenard and saffron, colonies and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. My goodness. He's such a fragrance. Such a fragrance. The bride of Christ is going to smell good. A fountain of waters, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Lebanon was where they had the giant cedars. Awake, O north wind, and come thou south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden, and eat his pleasant fruits. The north wind is the tribulation wind, the cold wind. That's to blow upon the, his garden. And the south wind is the warmth of his love. Both these winds are going to blow upon the church of the living God, the mighty army of Christ, before he comes again. But when they blow, then the beloved will come into his garden. And once again, he'll walk as he did in the days of Adam, the Lord God communing with his own. What a picture that is. What a picture. Oh, that was good. Thank you for bringing that in. Did I see a hand back there? I thought I might have. I'm not sure. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at one another and say, I have eaten of his word tonight. I have eaten of his word tonight. I have received his word. And his word is pleasant in my mouth. In my mouth. And I rejoice that he loves me. And I rejoice that he loves you. And me. And I love him. And I love him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus, my goodness. Let's, let's just uh, rise up here together and give the Lord a praise offering.